In the beginning of this video, I am showing you wealth building behavior. And one of the things that so many people don't understand is building wealth, leading a successful life is about taking action. And one of the greatest things that you can do if you're a parent of young children is teach them to read before they go to school. And I'm going to explain why that is so important and why that will give them a tremendous head start. One of the things that you consistently see with poor people is low impulse control. I kind of saw it in the storage auction business, but I didn't really spend a lot of time with my customers. In the car rental business, it is rampant. I would have people call me back to back to back to back six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. Will not leave a voicemail, will not leave a message. This is low impulse control. And it is a prevalent thing with poor people. Now, we all have crazy thoughts in our head from time to time. But most of us don't act upon those crazy thoughts. But the poor and disenfranchised often do. They may be like the guy who broke my glass. They may have been just sitting around drinking. Hey, let's go rob some cars. Okay. And they went ahead and did it. Low impulse control is one of the reasons, like there was a chick by the name of Bailey. She had super low impulse control. She was consistently getting arrested, getting in trouble. And one of the things that you will see with poor people, and this is a common thing I see here on YouTube. I'll see someone who will leave this type of comment or something very really similar to it. Everyone who is reading this comment, I wish you the utmost success and I hope you reach your dreams. These feel good platitudes are absolutely worthless, but they get people to like the comment, they get their dopamine hit. But in the grand scheme of things, comments like that absolutely do nothing. And this is one of the problems with poor people. Communication skills are extremely important. Communication skills have been important forever. In the digital age, they're even more important than they were 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. And poor people have very, very poor communication skills. The poorest is in the written word. This is why I do not consume TikTok. TikTok will make you dumb. And one of the things that when I was growing up that we had to do was learn how to write a letter. You, you would put your name and address, your date, and then there would be an opening to whom this may concern or, what, or something like that. Many people of today cannot pull that off. I know it sounds strange because to write a letter is super simple, but because people have allowed their minds to decay, they cannot pull off these simple things. Once again, in the car rental business, someone will hit me up. Hey, this is going on. I'm like, who are you? It's like, what's your name? What car do you have? Whenever I am writing someone new, First thing I do is introduce myself and I get straight to my business if it's in the email. It's like, hi, my name is Glendon Cameron. This is why I am writing you. Then boom, 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 boom. Right? Many people cannot effectively communicate. And in this day and age, if you're an ineffective communicator, this will touch every area of your life from your email communication to your video communication, to your verbal communication, to your dating life. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Let's talk about reading. My grandmother taught me to read before I went to school. Now, why is this important? Many parents do not, my grandmother was a teacher. 
So she had an inside track on learning and what happens to children who do not learn how to read. So she knew what would happen. So I, even though I am dyslexic, because my grandmother taught me to read, I never got behind. I was always ahead. I remember, I think it was the third grade, I took the California Achievement Test, and then I got a letter from the teacher to give to my mother. And back then, we did not read the letters. If the teacher gave you a letter, a sealed letter to take to your mom, you just take it home and give it your mom. You would not read it. So I didn't know what was in it. And they wanted to promote me. They, want, they wanted to jump a grade for me. And my mother, didn't, she, she, didn't, she didn't like that idea, so she didn't let them do it. But because my reading scores were so high, and I'm gonna talk about why reading is so important, and why I continue to be a reader to this day, why I continue to educate myself. Reading is the gateway skill to all other learning. So the better that you read, the easier it is for you to learn things. Let me say that again. The better that you read, the easier it is for you to learn things. And many people are very poor readers. I remember there was this periodical when I was growing up called Reader's Digest. And they would have these challenges in Reader's Digest and it would be like 24 words and I would get 20 to 22 every time. And as I got better and better, I would start nailing all 24. Growing up as a child, it was fun to learn. It was fun to consume new knowledge. It was fun. Right now, we have a bunch of kids who are not being pushed to learn. One of the things, like uh, one of the girls I'm dating, she talks about her sister and how her and her husband have no screen time days. They actually have three little kids and for like every other day, it's a no screen time day. These people are educated, they're informed, they know the danger of allowing your kids to be on a laptop or iPad or whatever. It rewires your brain and it destroys your attention span. So one of the important things, if you are a parent and you want your child to be successful, you need to push them to become a great reader. That's the first level. That's the first level. Teach them to become a great reader. I remember growing up, we had like uh, bookmobiles, we had reading lists, we had summer reading challenges. We were like 50 books. If you could read them over the summer, you get like a gold star. All that stuff is gone today because everyone is online. And what's so funny about that is your online communication. I have made millions of dollars because I'm a great communicator. I'm gonna give you an example of someone who was a great communicator who didn't have a degree that built a half billion dollar fortune. Rush Limbaugh. And I'm gonna tell you someone else. Remember the guy who played Jeffrey on The Fresh Prince? He got picked for that role because of his verbal communication skills. He got picked for, I don't know what they were paying Jeffrey, because he was on the every show, but I guarantee you, he, he wasn't getting chump change. See, this is one of the reasons I don't use slang. Like, I hate when someone leaves a comment, stop capping, stop being ignorant, stop being stupid. Because right now, I've been able to get women because I am smart and many people want to like, you know, make little disparaging comments that, oh, he's a big dummy, he's this, he's that, without knowing my body of work. I actually have a body of work. This YouTube channel is 12 years old. I've written books, you can go to Amazon, you can put my name, Glendon Cameron and Amazon, and books pop up. I've written multiple books. So from a communication, from a verbal communication skills, my verbal communication skills are very, very high. 
my written communication skills are very, very high. And this is one of the reasons I make so much money. And if you can dramatically increase your communication skills, dramatically, like if you are reading on a, I'm not trying to be dismissive, but there are many adults reading on a third and sixth grade level. If you can push yourself to read at a college level consistently, your income will go up. There have been numerous studies about this. Uh, Brian Tracy used to talk about it all the time. As you know, in personal development, and this is one of the things that I worked on really, really hard. I wasn't this kind of speaker years ago. I actually didn't like public speaking. So one of the big reasons that poor people are poor is poor people habits. No reading, no teaching the children, and we're gonna talk about that really, really heavily. No teaching the children how to read, no sitting down with their kids and playing board games, no socializing. These kids are growing up, they may have a high IQ, but they're being, they're growing up in a vapid situation. They're growing up without the, the pouring of, they're, they're like a, they're like a, a garden an unattended garden and there's weeds in their minds and they're, they're, they're growing up reckless and wild. If I get married and have more children, my wife will be a, home, a stay at home mom. My wife will be a stay at home mom and we will have a education plan for our children because the formative years, and this is where I learned how to read before I went to school, before I went to kindergarten, I knew how to read. I remember I was at kindergarten and I was reading this book to other kids and the teacher was amazed. She was like, you know how to read? Mm -hmm. And I was reading to the other little kids. So one of the things that you have got to do from a self-improvement standpoint of yourself, you've got to learn how to educate yourself and you've got to learn how to read and good comprehension skills. Once again, you know, I made many videos talking about how stupid the people on the internet was. I wasn't kidding. In my video, I could have been a predator. I laid it out. I wrote Craigslist ads. The girls came to me. From that, because these people have poor reading and comprehension skills, they somehow got the fact that I was going out and looking for little girls, even though I plainly stated what I was doing. I didn't actually, and this, this is what's funny. When I deployed the Craigslist protocols, I did not look for women. Women came to me. That was like 15 years of writing ads, women answering my ads, and me establishing relationships. But because so many people have poor people habits, low reading comprehension skills. And this, this messes with everything. If you are a poor reader, more than likely your time in school sucked because you couldn't read the, the information. You couldn't comprehend the information. It was a struggle. You got headaches. You were frustrated. And this is something else that happens to a lot of people who grow up in a poor environment. And I'm going to explain what a poor environment is in a minute. A lot of people are dropping out of school. And that's gonna be one of the worst decisions you could ever make. Because from a social economic standpoint, it limits your opportunities and it limits your income. And one of the things that I consistently see with poor people, low impulse control, big, big problem, big, big problem but the lack of practicing wealth building behavior, reading, educating yourself and becoming a producer versus a consumer is wealth building behavior. And this is something that poor people do not practice. I mean, the communication skills are like right now, I got a situation, I got a few situations. I got a girl who has a car, 
and she wants me to come pick it up and she lives an hour away. And I'm just sitting there like, bring it back. Now, this is one of the things that I suffer in the car rental business is people will get themselves in a situation and when the situation starts to get a little rough, they want to evacuate the situation in the most comfortable manner. For me to go an hour out of my way to actually have to spend money to go get my car that she's not paying for, this creates an undue burden on me. And this is one of the things. And this is something that Jordan Peterson talks about, conscientiousness traits. These people are devoid of a conscientiousness trait. It's completely missing, it's completely absent. A conscientiousness trait, she would have brought my car back but because she is seeking comfort and ease, she wants me to come get the car and I may have to go get that car to get it back. And this may include another policy, like if you live an hour away from this address, I'm not renting to you. Because consistently, this has been a problem where these people, once again, reading, comprehension skills, critical thinking skills, problem solving skills. I've had this problem happen a lot of people live an hour outside of Atlanta and they want to do Uber and DoorDash and they struggle. You want to know why? Because where they live, the business isn't that good, but they will keep trying to do it because they want to be comfortable versus successful. They want to be comfortable versus being successful. And I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to see some patterns here. Poor problem solving skills, another issue. I am amazed at the number of men who are incompetent. I had a situation where a guy said that the oil light came on and I was like, and this, this is very frustrating. And like, I had another guy, and I'll tell you how this conversation went. I am starting to take my cars away from these incompetent people because if the oil thing comes on, that means the car needs oil, usually a quart of oil. Go to Google, 10 seconds, figure out what kind of oil it needs. And this might take you 15 minutes to find out what kind of oil it needs. Go get the oil and put it in there. I had this one guy who could not figure out where to put the oil and it has a little oil can on the cap. And it says Castor. He couldn't figure it out. So it's not bad that he didn't know. That's not the sin. The sin is he didn't want to learn how to know. That's the sin. It's called apathy. And someone else ran that car and I thought he had put oil in and the oil light came on. I was like, this guy didn't even put oil in the car. So there's a very high level of incompetence in the poor community where people cannot do things, where people aren't dependable, where people, and this is another issue. A lot of folks don't have friends or they don't have the funds to get an Uber because she keeps whining about like, I need a ride. I'm like, bring my car back. And one of the situations that happens, and I had another situation with another gentleman who said the oil light came on and I was like, put oil in there. And he's like, do I have to do maintenance? I didn't even, I didn't even go back. I was like, just bring it back. Either you can put the oil in there or you can bring it back. And he's like, what am I gonna drive? I was like, I have no clue because you bring it back, I'm ending the rental. Because this ain't, and I, I, I did not get as snippy as I wanted to because I've learned that, you know, I don't want these people tearing up my stuff. But I was like, this is a very simple and cheap problem to solve. Very simple and cheap. And if you cannot do that, I understand you may not want to do it. You can't do it. I'm just taking my vehicle back and rent to someone else. And I haven't heard from him. I have not heard from him because one of the things I'm beginning to understand is that poor people, because they have no conscientiousness trait, they have poor reading skills, they have poor communication skills, they have poor people habits. Now, what are poor people habits? I consistently get vehicles back that are filthy. I'm not talking about it's a little dirty. I am talking filthy, like a pigsty. 
So there is a direct correlation between being unclean and being stupid. There's a direct correlation because I could not personally live in a situation like that. I just couldn't. I mean, right now my place is kind of messy because I got all these new clothes around here and I haven't put them away. That's it. I mean, but filthy, dirty, trashy. Also, poor people do not plan well. I had a car today that the guy ran over some and the car was on bone empty. It took a hundred dollars to fill up the Range Rover. A hundred dollars. So when I get these cars back, I know that they're going to be on E. I know. And one of the things I'm starting to do is I'm not filling them up. I'm renting them out. It's like on E. He's like, you need to get some gas if you want to go. Because these people consistently bring back the cars on E. And they're like, I was supposed to fill it up. And I had this conversation with this guy. It's like, when you left out, the car was clean. You didn't have a full tank of gas. It did not come back anywhere like that. The car was filthy, trashed out, smoked out because he smoked weed. And he brought it back on E. And he got mad at me because I put in a claim and he couldn't rent another car. I was like, you don't have to worry about renting any more cars from me. Because what I'm seeing here is there's a direct correlation, and Earl Nightingale talked about this in Lead to Field. And I, I lived in Sandy Springs for 12 years. There's virtually no trash in Sandy Springs. People do not throw trash. And these are people working hard. But you go to Southwest Atlanta, trash is all over the place. And these folks are not working that hard. They don't care about their environment. This goes back to the conscientiousness trait. I personally cannot roll down the highway and throw trash out the window. It's just not something I would do. There are people who would do it in a heartbeat without thinking. Without thinking. So if you want to level up, you need to dramatically increase your communication skills. Written, verbal, video, whatever you need to do, you need to dramatically and I, I went on Amazon, Verbal Advantage is still available. You can get Verbal Advantage. I recommend you get Verbal Advantage. And I also recommend that you will start journaling every day. This is something I used to do for years. I don't do it anymore because I don't feel a need, but you should write down your thoughts. In the beginning, it's gonna look a little crazy because you're not used to extracting thoughts from your head and putting them to paper. So you're going to see some confused writing. You're going to see some crazy stuff. But as you continue to journal, you're going to get smarter. Journaling will make you smarter because it will teach you how to organize your thoughts and it will teach you how to think. Because one of the things that I am seeing, and I'm seeing it all over the Internet, is that poor people are also egotistical. The guy who stole my 740i and incidentally cost $2,800 worth of damage and I only made $3,000 off of them. This, this is what I'm seeing consistently, consistently that poor people cannot maintain. They don't have any virtue in terms of maintaining. That car was in mint condition as a, you know, it had a shattered windshield. Uh, the tires were messed up, the car was filthy, I had to have it shampooed. I'm consistently seeing a strong correlation between filth and stupidity. If you can live in filth and it doesn't bother you, I think that you're mentally ill. I think that you were mentally ill. That is something wrong with you. And I've had some family members that I saw this in and I tried to talk to them and they were like, hey, you know, that's just how I am. I was like, okay, I don't really talk to them anymore because let's go back to high IQs and this will show you the environments. Barack Obama is definitely smarter than George W. Bush, but George W. Bush is richer than Barack Obama. Why? Because George W. Bush family owned a baseball team. He grew up in an environment, an encove 
of wealth. And because he grew up in that wealthy uncove, he's wealthy, his family's wealthy, his children are wealthy. Even though Barack Obama is smarter, what does that tell you? Environments matter. If you have small children, I want you to listen to me. Do not live in the cheapest neighborhood. What you're doing is picking your children's future friends boyfriends and girlfriends that's what you've done you have picked their social networks before they even start walking again now because you live in a poor neighborhood and statistically it has been shown that especially if you're black that the children of black middle class parents don't do well as their parents because of this hood nature this hood nature. So <clears throat> I would advise you to bust it, to live in the wealthiest neighborhood that you can, to read to your children and teach them to read before high school and actually buy them educational games. Because if you will look at the typical, like I, I'll give you, uh, there was this girl I was dating and we were taking dance lessons. And you see this with immigrants. There was these little kids learning how to dance. I mean, they were like six or seven years old. This is what their parents were dropping in their heads, how to have culture. You know, <clears throat> someone said it was a bunch of white YouTubers making videos. I, not compared to the number of black folks I've seen. And also, I want you to look at culture. Many of these people are uncultured. If you will know this, and you can go back through my 12 years of videos, you will see something that you don't see on the typical YouTuber's walls. I have art. When I was a kid, I took commercial art in high school. I used to draw, paint, blow stuff up in the can, and it'd be like, boom! I was like, oh, 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 I did it again. And I have an appreciation for classical music, and I have an appreciation because the arts, intellect, and learning all move in the same circles. And once again, many of these uncultured heathens, like you, you'll see it all the time. You'll see it often on YouTube. You'll see someone blow up on YouTube, get some money, and they'll get a big house. And look at their walls. Their walls are naked. They don't have no art whatsoever because they now have arose from a financial standpoint, but from a cultural standpoint, they're still where they were. You cannot buy breathing. It's something you have to give yourself. You cannot purchase it. You cannot fake it. And I, one of my new little friends came over and she's like, I've never seen a guy with this much art ever. She said, most of the guys I know, their places have no art. Because once again, once you get into the arts, once you get into education, once you get into communication, things change. Because let me tell you what I did. I came in with a new ethos for this place. I got rid of some art that I had for years and I went ahead and got some new stuff that I, I like the vibe. I really, really like the vibe. And I will always have art in my life, always. That panda head back there is part of a panda suit. That was an ideal that never materialized. But guys, to be, you know, a lot of people are trying to financially level up. I'm gonna tell you something. If you level up your communication skills, the money will follow. Let me say that again. If you level up your communication skills, the money will follow. Because as you, like th this is one of the things. I used to read the dictionary. I know that sounds really strange, but I used to read the dictionary. And for every word, new word you learn, you learn 10 more. So if you learn 10 new words a week, 
you virtually learn the hundred new words. And once your vocabulary expands where you can use words like Calvinistic and you can use duplicity and you, and you actually use them in the right place and time and manner, you're, you're, you're speaking, Rush Limbaugh, if, if that is not an example, Rush Limbaugh, Jeffrey on the Fresh Prince, if those are not an example of high verbal communication skills and how much money you can make, I can't break it off for you any better. If you've noticed, I've changed the direction of the channels. There's going to be a lot of changes uh, this month and next month. I'm getting ready to redo a lot of things because one of the things I realized is whenever I dig into my strengths, I make a lot of money. And right now I'm digging into my strengths. Like there's going to be more videos like this. There are going to be more exposés like this. And I'm not going to do trendy cultural stuff like the metaverse. You want to know why? Because see, you build a sloppy channel. I want to shout out to all of the people who support me because I saw you guys in action dealing with the dissenters. And you know, that's really interesting. They're mad because I have supporters. They can't understand, once again, the majority of the people who are leaving these dissenting comments are poor. They don't have organized thought patterns. They don't have the ability to critical problem solve. So they don't understand why you guys support me because they're dumb. And I'm not saying that to be mean, I'm saying that to be factual. One of the things, and th this is another thing that many people try to do. I don't, I don't know if you guys understand, but this guy's a pedo. They'll come in like that and the comment goes nowhere. So because these people are poor and they have a very limited understanding of anything, like the United States of America, it's built on the rule of law. A lot of folks have no clue to the rule of law. They have no idea. I've actually gone down the Fulton County Courthouse, sat in court sessions and watched court proceedings. It is nothing like television, nothing like television. And what people don't understand is if you increase your verbal communications, you increase your video communication and you understand the law, that's money. That's money. But because poor people are seeking comfort versus success, that's why they are poor. Don't work on their communication skills. Don't work on the verbal communication skills. Don't work on success habits and continue to do dumb things. I had a girl rent a car and the, the GPS on this one, I haven't gotten it back yet because I, I think that she disconnected the GPS system on it. Um, she lived way out yonder and she was trying to do Uber and DoorDash way out yonder. I, in 2014, I drove for Uber to write a book for Uber. And I quickly realized you had to go where the money was. I, I just, I, I am amazed at how many people cannot s do a simple problem, problem solving um, a situation, assess the situation. I want to do DoorDash. I want to do Uber. I want to do Lyft. Where are the hot areas in town? There are many Uber and Lyft drivers that have figured that out and that's why they're successful. But the perpetually poor, it, it missed them. Because during this great resignation where all these people are quitting their jobs and I've seen numerous YouTube videos of people who quit their jobs and didn't have another one. You know how stupid that is? That is stupid. People have become addicted to the stimulus economy. What is the stimulus economy? We're not foreclosing. We're not evicting. We're not repoing. And once they got comfortable with that, and when I was in the military, they would not let you take too much leave because you would lose your military bearing. And I understand the most leave you could take while you're on active duty was like two months, I believe, maybe three. I'm not sure about that. These months, these people had a 24 month break. Many of these people had a 12 to 24 month break from real life. 
and they're still living in the stimulus economy, even though the stimulus economy is slowly, slowly going away. And these people haven't figured out when this whole thing started, what did I say? If you, if what was my message? And you can go back to the early videos. It's like, if you can get some government money, you get to stay at home, learn a new skill, read books. Don't sit home and smoke weed and have sex. What do people do? They sat at home, they smoked weed, they had sex, they messed around. That's what they did. Versus leveling up, learning how to communicate better, learning how to be a better speaker, learning how, once again, and when I start my intellectual property channel, that's gonna be really dope because uh, I'm taking my time with that, just like I'm taking my time with personal capital. I'm not just throwing up videos on those channels. So guys, you have got to get your verbal skills up if you want to be successful. Now, social media will show you a football player, a basketball player, and even with these guys. You remember how horrible that basketball players and football players used to sound? You don't really see that problem because they get media training. They learn how to speak. You need to level up your verbal communication. I cannot understate how important that is and what a difference that will make in your life if you level up your verbal communication. If you go ahead and do the hard work, learn new words, start journaling, start reading, put yourself in school. One of the reasons that I've been successful is I've been in school these last 23 years. Every month I learn something new. And you got people who are broke, who refuse to pick up a book. You got people who are broke, who refuse to watch anything other than drivel on YouTube or TikTok. They will not watch a TED talk. They will not watch anything where they actually have to sit and pay attention and think. Mm -mm, they won't do that. So guys, you have got to start pushing yourself. You've got to start really leveling up your verbal and communication game. Written communication, verbal communication, and video communication. Those three things can make you rich. If you level up your verbal communication, it can make you rich. It can dramatically change your life like it has changed my life. I was a little nerd in school. I had no problem with being a nerd. And then I was a nerd that started playing football and that kind of got me my first little girlfriend. So guys, do not practice poor people habits. What are poor people habits? A refusal to educate, a refusal to elevate their communication, a refusal to prop, learn how to problem solve. I keep hearing all of this that the elite are keeping their foots on the neck of the poor. I don't believe that's the case. I know that's not the case. The reason that poor people are poor is because they have poor people habits and they continue to replicate these habits. And that's what's really insidious is they pass these poor people habits down to their children who then in turn pass the poor people habits down to their children and create this super stupid loop of low achievement, low expectations, and low information diets. You get generation after generation after generation of stupid. And they're happy with it. Because the thing is, they don't understand that they're stupid. They think they're smart because they can get up and walk around and move their arms and they're animated. They, they, they think they're smart, but they're really, really stupid. Really, really stupid. And I don't say that once again to be dismissive or mean, I say that to be factual. Because in America, right now in 2021, if you can communicate very well, you can get rich. You can get rich if you can learn how to communicate very well. Write a book, create a podcast, create a YouTube channel. If you can learn to communicate, you can become wealthy in America. So that's all I got for you guys. Be sure to go below, get the free audio book, and I will see you guys in the next one.